Good morning and good afternoon, and welcome to another episode of Before Coffee. This time we're going to really just start right off because Roger's already awake, we're already here on Discord, and we're ready to go. So, when you're, one of those when you're things ready, is true. Huh? <laughs> I said one of those things is true, I'm one not sure which one. Are you, you're not awake and you're not ready to go. Which one is it? Go ahead. Spit out the headline. Alright. Today on shopping news. Shopping on secondhand platforms. More sustainable? Yes. But not if you put it on once. Ox producer says she was set up in the minion case. More in the Ukraine conflict, Russian cruise missile destroyed in Crimea, and she invites Putin back to China. Oh boy, I just said in China, I had to bury the China story. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, upsets in women's basketball. Oh no. Upsets. And catch you off guard because you had I didn't my have headline a third story. up there. I didn't I had my so headline the third, up there. The but third story is always hard because it's usually yeah. not on the top, it's somewhere in the middle on, on the front page for me. Right. Um, and I don't want to repeat yesterday's story. Protests against projects of large Dutch dredging companies in the Maldives. U.S. studies way to expand FDIC as bank failures continue. Uh, we will cover that and more today's episode of For Coffee. All right, for our first news story, we're going to be looking at shopping on second-hand platforms. Yes, very exciting news. Should you be buying stuff second-hand? Is it sustainable? It is extremely popular buying and selling second-hand clothes via an online platform such as Vinted, Vistair Collective, or The Next Closet. But the bigger the platform gets, the more criticism swells. Are, there, are they a more sustainable alternative to new clothes, or do they mainly stimulate our purchasing behavior? Founded 15 years ago in Lithuania, now active in 18 countries, Vinted has, Vinted has over 80 million users. One of them is Daphne Yansa, who shopped on the platform once or twice a month, mainly because she considers secondhand clothing more environmentally friendly. It's easy and selection is great, I don't always have to go to thrift stores or vintage stores. 45% of Dutch women sometimes buy secondhand clothing, according to a 2020 study commissioned by the Ministry of Infrastructure and Water Management. Of all fashion sold worldwide, 3-5% is now secondhand, but according to the American consultancy firm Boston Consultancy Group, this could rise to 40% in the future. With that knowledge, retailers such as Zolando, the Bidenkorf, and Zaymon have started selling used clothes in their recent years. But this explosively growing second-hand market is subject to criticism from experts. The platforms are built in such a way that users can scroll through the virtually inexhaustible and often very affordable offers. And if you are tired of a piece of clothing, you can easily resell it. It leads to impulsive buying, according to Vinted itself. A significant number of shoppers report that they often shop for fashion items without a direct practical motivation. One, only in 39 out of 100 cases was an item purchased on Vinted to replace a written off item of clothing. I certainly also make impulsive purchases, says Jansen. Recently I bought a pair of jeans that turned out not to fit. The argument of these types of companies is that if you buy from us, you can buy as much as you want because you give garments a second life and that is sustainable, says researcher Marie de Rose. Also founder of BioCircular fashion brand, Positive Fibers. But that is not necessarily the case. If you buy a dress 
that you only wear to one party, there's nothing sustainable about it. Selling all those clothes from seller to buyer also causes quite a few emissions. In the case of Vinted, the packages are now going all over Europe and North America. The company says it wants to stimulate delivery to collection points, which produces fewer emissions than home delivery. Vinted tries to parry the criticism with an extensive study of its own climate impact. A report published today states that the second-hand purchase of the platform is more sustainable than buying a new garment. Incidentally, a total of 2.4 million users were asked to complete a survey, in which the response was about a meager 11%, which makes the survey less representative. The calculation of Vinted's net emissions does not include how many Vinted purchases will be offered for sale again on the platform in the foreseeable future. Only 20% of Vinted users cite environmental and social considerations as the main argument for shopping on the platform in the survey. Same goes for Yonsa. I only try to buy from sellers in the Netherlands to keep it as environmentally friendly as possible. At the same time, almost half of the users say affordability is the main reason. Dutch CEO of Vinted, Thomas Planteja, says in response to the report that the company wants to help people see the value of items they own. We will use lessons from this analysis to help our members change their fashion consumption habits. At the same time, the company wants to continue to grow rap rapidly and will have to become profitable at some point. Will Vinted then remain a more sustainable alternative? A new calculation will have to be made for this. And that's my story about buying secondhand clothes. I always worry about bed bugs with that kind of stuff too. <laughs> bed parasites bugs. are living in it. Yeah, I, yeah. Well, I'm sure they watch them. Think, I'm thinking in Goodwill and in, in those places. Yeah, that's yeah. a bit more risky. Are we sure they wash them? Guess I'll have to look that up later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a New York Times story. Byline: Nicholas Confessor. That's a great name. And Katie Robertson. Fox producer says she was set up in the Minion case. The producer, Abby Grossberg, said in a pair of lawsuits that the effort to place blame on her and Mia Bar Maria Bartiromo, the Fox business host, was rooted in rampant misogyny and discrimination at the company. A Fox News producer who has worked... Uh, a Fox News producer who has worked with the hosts Maria Bartiromo and Tucker Carlson filed lawsuits against the company in New York and Delaware on Monday, accusing Fox lawyers of coercing her into giving misleading testimony and continuing legal battle around the network's coverage of unfounded claims about election fraud. The producer, Abby Grossberg, said Fox lawyers had tried to position her and Mrs. Bartiromo to take the blame for Fox's repeated airing of conspiracy theories about Dominion voting systems and its supposed role in manipulating the results of the 2020 presidential election. Dominion has filed 1.6 million defamation suit against, Ms. against Fox. Ms. Grossberg said that the effort to place blame on her and Ms. Bartiromo are, was rooted in rampant misogyny and discrimination at the network. The new lawsuits, coupled with the revelations from the Dominion legal fight, shed light in the rivalries and, bat and turf battles that raged at Fox News in the wake of the 2020 election. As network executives fought to hold on the viewers furious at the top-rated network for accurately reporting President Donald J. Trump's defeat in Arizona. Step back for a minute. They call yeah. themselves the news, and all they're doing is worrying about, oh, our ratings, our ratings, we need to support our ratings, not the facts. Forget facts. Stop calling yourself news. <laughs> exactly. That's the old, uh, why did MSNBC does the same thing as MSNBC doesn't call themselves news? And they don't lie, actually. And if they do lie, they correct themselves. I mean, if they do have shitty people on there, I mean, people that have done stupid crap. But Fox News pretends it's news. MSNBC is opinion. They don't say they're anything else but opinion. The... The network's disregard for women, Ms. Grossberg alleged, left her and Ms. Bart Bartiromo understaffed, stretched too thin to properly vet the truthfulness of claims made against the opinion on there. I, I was I was able I was able to dis discern the truthfulness of their claims without any research whatsoever. It's amazing. But they <laughs> needed research. Okay. In her complaints, Mrs. Roseberry accuses lawyers for 
Fox News of coaching her in a course of an intimidating manner before her September disposition, deposition. The lawyer, she said, gave her imp impression that she had to avoid mentioning prominent male executives and on-air talent to protect them from any blame while putting her own reputation of ri at risk. This is what the culture is here, Miss Grossberg. They don't respect or value women. Well, there Welcome you to go. The future. Slap me with a fish. On Monday morning, Fox filed its own suit against Ms. Grossberg, seeking to enjoin her from filing cases that would shed light on her discussions with the company lawyers. A judge has not ruled on Fox's suit later on Monday, so Fox is soon to keep her quiet. Not for anything. Of course, yeah. yeah. What do you mean? We're misogynists. Okay, your story. All right. For my next story, we're just going to up date ourselves on the Ukraine situation. Mm -hmm. Russian missiles have been destroyed at about half half 12 in the morning in Europe. Russian missiles had been destroyed in explosions in Crimea. The Ukrainian Defense Military Ministry reported that caliber cruise missiles were transported by rail and were destroyed by the explosions in the city of Zyanskov, Eve said. The Russian army has not yet responded. The missiles were most likely intended for Russia's Black Sea Fleet, which is based in Crimea. Caliber variants can travel over 2,500 kilometers for land targets and up to 375 kilometers for sea targets. The Ukrainian army did not say whether it was responsible for the explosions, but said that the explosions continued the process of demilitarizing Russia and preparing Crimea for liberation from the Russians. A Russian-appointed official says Dyankov has been the target of drone strikes, and a 33-year-old man was injured by debris from a drowned drone. Downed drone. He has been taken to the hospital. A house, school, and supermarket would have been caught fire, and the electricity grid would have been damaged. At Dyankov, there was an explosion in the am ammunition depot in August last year. Crimea has been occupied by Russia since 2014. Most countries view the peninsula as Ukrainian territory. President Zelensky of Ukraine has said on several occasions that the Ukrainian army wants to retake Crimea from the Russians. Further, Japanese Prime Minister Kishida is on his way to the Ukrainian capital Kyiv for talks with President Zelensky. The visit was not announced in advance. Of course it wasn't. Why do they, why do they always have to say that? They didn't tell us! <laughs> During an active conflict, they didn't tell us where special leaders of countries are going. Images appeared on Japanese channel NHK of Kishida boarding a train in Poland in the direction of Ukraine. A few hours before, Kishida spoke with his Indian colleague Modi in New Delhi. Kishida is the only leader of the G7 countries who had not yet visited Ukraine. The Japanese Prime Minister is expected to emphasize his support for Ukraine during his visit. Japan has also imposed heavy sanctions against Russia because of the war. And also, they've no never been fans of Russia. So... Russia also stole their land, according to them, so... <laughs> right. Um, Russia hosts UN Security Council meeting to deport Ukrainian children. That's right. This whole time, they have... In Moscow, they want to discuss the real situation of children the Kremlin has adopted from Ukraine. Ukraine and the West say Russia deported the children. Last week, International wow. Criminal Court in The Hague issued an arrest warrant against President Putin and Russian... Ombudsman for Children, according to ICC. They are responsible for the abduction of the deportation of Ukrainian children to occupied territories. Territories. Russia does not recognize the ICC, calling the arrest warrant illegitimate and outrageous, as we covered yesterday. According to Russian US, UN Ambassador Vasily Nemenzia, the meeting was planned even before the arrest warrant was announced. Yeah, sure. Whatever makes you feel good. <laughs> uh, we've also have ex- Prisoners of Wagner Army have been released from British military intelligence reports. Uh, and if Russian bombers flying over Japan to, I guess, uh, antagonize them as Kushida visits Ukraine. And uh, that's about it for the Ukraine update here. On to your story. Great. We're doing a great job of reading news. To watch me screw it up. Uh, in news, as the thing I was trying to bring up earlier when we were picking NCAA basketball was uh, 
For the women's tournament to get as good as the men's tournament, they need more parity. So now we're getting that. We're getting, instead of bullouts in the first round by 40 points, which is what the men used to do 40 years ago, let's watch the first round. Let's not watch the first round. Huh? Yeah. So the men, the women's game's catching up. And here's a here's a here's a sign. Another number one gone as Indiana loses to Miami. The Hoosiers join Stanford as a top seed to lose their home courts with the loss to oh. Miami. With a loss to Miami, Indiana is just the sixth number one to miss the round of 16 since 1994. So in your lifetime, only six number one seeds have missed the Sweet 16 in the women's tournament. That's not yeah. parity. <laughs> That's all the good teams, all the good players are at the top. Uh, yeah. So, But it's it's evening out as there's more good players. This was happening in the 90s, by the way. And then, I don't basketball. know what happened to what, I don't know what happened to women's athletics in the early 2000s, but maybe it just took a step back for some reason. I'm not sure. But it was making progress, and I think it just took a, a back. For the first, as a matter of fact, it says for the first time since 1998, the round was 16. So 1998, it might have peaked or yeah. leveled off. Might have leveled off. Women's tournament will be played without two of its number one seeds. Number nine seed Miami, after blitzing Indiana early, then holding on for dear life on an onslaught led by Mackenzie Holmes, will instead head to the tournament's second bracket weekend for the first time since 92, two years before the bracket-defining expansion that built the tournament up to 64 teams. Miami's Destiny Harden took off, shook off a Destiny Harden, great name, shook off a defender with up and under move, gained enough space, for a bucket inside with four seconds left for the 70-68 win. Her basket came moments after Indiana's Darden Garzon had tied the game with a step-back three-pointer. Her second tying three of the final minute. The final panic attempt by Hoosiers to avoid missing the round of 16 for the first time since 2019 ended up the ball being stripped near the top of the key. That sent the Hurricanes across the floor to hug each other in triumph. Touching off a celebration that carried into the locker room and resonated throughout the sport in which home court advantage has often been a major factor early in a tournament. Again, they will they will do home court advantage in these. They won't they won't put them in little pods just so they can get crowds. Because well I said in ten years this will be a more popular sport. Yeah. Because you'll have more athletes. You'll have more people involved in it. And you won't have teams. You have weak teams holding in games even in, in the first round I watched watch games where some of these weaker teams were actually so so-called weaker teams we're making them actual you know making them good games and that's all you really want is a good game it doesn't have to be you know it has to be competitive if it's the second quarter and one team's up by 20 you know yeah. nobody's watching that nobody cares even their even their family members are turning them they're like god come on where are we going after a game second quarter man we ain't won yet ah this game's <laughs> over let's go yeah. All right, your story. All right, for my final story, we're talking about protests. Uh, lots of protests happening in Europe these days. I don't know if you remember when we talked about France being very angry about raising the age of their yep. the retirement oh, age. They kind we're of angry about that, that here. Yeah, they kind of forced that through, like you know, basically yep. on a presidential executive order, kind of the same idea, right? They just forced it through without votes. And uh, people in Paris were very angry about that, so they set fire to the streets. Um, because <laughs> that's you know threatening the threatening the power of the the voters, right? Because he just passed it without asking the actual representatives. Uh, in the Netherlands, protest against the Dredger Oranje is not welcome in the Maldives is online with text from the activists of Save the Maldives campaign expressing their opposition to a major project and with a Dutch company, Boscalis has been hired. Commissioned by the Maldivian government, Boscalis is creating new land for a port in a shallow lagoon close to the capital Malé. Boscalis has been awarded a 120 million euro contract for development and adaption to the changing climate, the company itself announced in a press release at the beginning of this year. But according to the Save Maldives campaign, the project has little to do with climate adaption. 24.5 million cubic meters of sand are being extracted from the seabed in an ecological sensitive area, says Hume 
Abdul Ghaffour of the Action Group. The group argues that dredging will be so detrimental to marine life, coral reefs, and fishermen's lifestyle that will make residents more vulnerable to impacts of climate change. Abdul Ghaffour is trying to stop Boscalis dredging through a lawsuit. The Action Group started an online petition against another project some 500 kilometers further south near the islands of Adu Atoll. The petition had no effect. Machines from the Dutch company Van Oord are now digging here. Additional land will be created in three places on the coast, in addition to three new islands. The company speaks of a combination project, project in which climate adaption is one of the goals. Land reclamation creates coastal protection and at the same time adds value with economic development, says the spokesman for Van Oord. The new land is partly intended for housing and partly for commercial real estate and tourism. It is the Maldives, after all. <laughs> But it must also better protect residents against the consequences of climate change. In June, there was another major flood due to extreme weather and something that residents say is becoming more common. Activist Abdul Ghavor has a negative opinion. According to her, the project will destroy the projected marine areas of Abdul Atoll and actually worsen the archipelago's resilience to climate change. The possible irreversible damage to the environment is also mentioned in a study that Van Oord commissioned together with the government of the Maldives. Nevertheless, the project is necessary, says Van Oord. The company wants to take measures at Adu to minimize environmental damage, including by moving coral and seagrass. These natural materials are then used for coastal protection of the newly reclaimed land. Very long stuff. One of the environmental surveys says residents of nearby Billy. Villingilly Island are concerned that the corals near the island are possible coastal erosion from movement of sand. There are no long-term studies, but the Maldives residents are convinced the coastal developments exacerbates climate problems. We explained to them that before the work starts, we will first build a dike that closes off the lagoon, where we can reclaim the land. That keeps all sand inside to protect the coral. coral. There is a chance that the current of the island will become stronger due to land reclamation. This is a monitored by an independent consultant for up to two years after the project. Should coastal erosion occur, the damage must be compensated. Acti activists are not convinced. So first you cause damage, then you monitor that damage. Why should we be happy with that? There you go. Great right. land reclamation, something Dutch people are very good at. But also... Great. Maybe not great. <laughs> <laughs> They're not great at it. Uh, it's not great for the environment to reclaim land. Mm. Yeah, not, it depends what you're reclaiming it for. If you're reclaiming an industrial park for swampland, it's probably good for you. There's, or is that called declaiming? <laughs> declaiming. <laughs> okay, uh, in a two minute read sort of story, use official study ways to expand FD, FDIC coverage to. All deposits report. FDIC stands for Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. U.S. Treasury Department staff. This is from Econom the Economic Time News, written by staff and taken from Reuters. Okay. U.S. officials are looking. Oh, I did that already. U.S. Department staff are studying whether. Federal regulators have enough emergency authority to insure deposits above the current two hundred fifty thousand dollar cap. And which accounts with the, on accounts without the mem without consent of Congress. The report said, citing people familiar with the matter, one legal framework based look that's being looked at, at for expanding FDI insurance would use the Treasury Department's authority to take emergency action, and and lean on the Exchange Stabilization Fund. The report added, authorities do not see such a move as necessary yet, especially after. Regulators took steps this month to help banks keep up with any demands for withdrawals, but they are still developing a strategy out of due diligence in case the, in case the situation worsens. Due to it, decisive recent actions, the situation has stabilized, deposit flows are improving, and the Americans have confidence in the safety of their deposits, a U.S. Treasury spokesman told Bloomberg. The Treasury had no media comment on the report when contacted by Reuters. Now we go down to another story in the same vein about the, have you covered the Swiss bank? Let's go down to that one. Does it sound the same picture? 
I kind of covered it yesterday, but it was more about how Dutch banks are affected by the Swiss. Why did Swiss Swiss rescue deal entails 280 billion support? Credit Suisse, Swiss, I credit Credit Swiss, spelled S U I S S S E. I think that's pronounced Swiss, right? And UBS could benefit UABS is universe, uh, some United Bank of Scotland, I believe. Hmm? Could benefit from more than 260 billion in Swiss francs and state and central bank support. A third country's gross domestic product. A third of the country's gross domestic product is Switzerland. But that is that really that's kind of sad, but it's not a big country. <laughs> UBS said that it'll pay 3.2 billion. Oh no, I think UBS is the uh, I think it's the Swiss, the United Bank Switzerland. That's yeah. These are financing the entire country. Yeah. And UBS tells employees don't divulge business secrets to your credit Swiss colleagues. Um, we have different things that these banks have been accused of money and so forth. But we'll not get into that. We'll get into more stuff that's more entertaining. <laughs> Ready for the brackets. All right. Uh, let's, let's go to the brackets for the women's. Or eight games, or eight games. We gotta pick. I've already made them. So I've ready. already picked them, but let's right just on. go in order here. We've got South. Okay. It's gonna be. Wait, wrong bracket. Oh, you're here. South. It's gonna be. It's South. We're gonna. It's gonna be South Carolina. Com convenient against UCLA, and I've picked South Carolina winning that match. I've got South Carolina to be a number one team for most of the year. <laughs> I still will tend to take chalk in games like this. Go ahead. All right, then we've got Notre Dame versus Maryland. I'm going to go home here because Maryland has good sports teams. Just from my own personal experience. <laughs> I guess I'm going homer again. So Okay. On Maryland too. Then as Next we one. head over to the Seattle Four, I guess is what it's called. We're gonna yeah. I'm gonna, it's Ole Miss versus Louisville, and I'm gonna go Ole Miss because they have a good marching band. I've got I'm taking Louisville. Yeah. I've got a trivia question. Is it is the capital of Kentucky pronounced Louisville or Louisville? Uh Louis, because it's French. No, it's pronounced Frankfurt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then uh, for our final <laughs> game here, we have Colorado versus Iowa, and I chose Iowa for that one. Man, I got Iowa too because they got a really good player. I'm going to take Iowa. Okay. Right then on. we head over to Greenville too with Miami, Florida, which we were talking about in your previous segment, versus Villanova. And I'm going to go Villanova because I like that name. That's it. What's Villanova? What's Villanova seating here? It's uh, four. Okay, four. Okay. Yeah, we're going chalk in this one, Villanova. Then we have LSU versus Utah, and I went LSU, which is three a three seed versus a two seed. I'm gonna go Utah. Yeah. Because I'm gonna be in the upset train for the rest of it. <laughs> You never know, right? You never know. Right. I need upsets. I need interest. Go ahead. Okay. Then we've got in Seattle 3, we've got Virginia Tech versus Tennessee. And I'm going VTech here. I'm going with Tennessee. All right. Another upset. And then finally, Tennessee is a rich got, tradition. Yeah. Finally, we've got Ohio State versus UConn. And I just, I'm, I just have to pick UConn because there's a dog. Uh, and... <laughs> This one, I gotta go. Yeah, I'm picking. I'm picking upset, man. I'm picking Ohio State. All right. I don't. We don't need UConn in both finals. That's sickening. <laughs> <laughs> well, I say why not? Uh, and that's, oh, because uh, our... you know how many championships Connecticut already has in women's basketball? <laughs> Twelve, fifteen, something like that. Yeah, that's why they're a good but, bet, and that's and that's our. Well, that's just uh, that's, that's what's top, wrong with the sweet sport. Sweet sixteen though. picks. For the women's the basketball tournament. Yeah. 
I'm just talking over you because you're just going to yeah. go on a tirade about it. Go on, it's not a tirade. I'm just saying that's what's wrong with it. Well, no, because, uh, and, and now you, we can go into my media coverage of, let's see. They have finally found guilty the murderer of, the murderers of rapper XXX Tension. Tentation. Tentation. I've never known how to say it. Um, okay. Three men on trial for the murder of rapper XXX and Tashion have been found guilty by Florida jury. The men, aged 27, 26, and 24, were charged with first-degree murder. The three faced life imprisonment. The penalty will be determined later. Rapper XXX and Tashion, his real name, Joseph Onfroy, was shot dead in Florida in June 2018. The 20-year-old rapper was walking out of a motorcycle shop when he was approached by two armed, masked men. It turned into a struggle with at least one of the men shooting XXX Tatashian, and the whole incident lasted about 45 seconds. The suspect then grabbed a bag full of 50000 in cash that the rapper had just picked up from the bank and then fled in an SUV. Testimony was given against the three suspects by a fourth man who had also been pleading guilty in the case. The lawyers for the trio said the fourth man was lying. They also pointed out that there was no DNA evidence against the three. The chief prosecutor pointed out that the lack thereof was irrelevant, as cell phone records show that the three suspects were together near their motorcycle shop at the time of the rapper's death. There was, <laughs> yeah, we can trace you. We can trace your phone signal. So you were I'm there. Sure, I'm sure it was over something really important too. Yeah, money, fifty thousand in cash. Yeah, there oh was boy. also Bluetooth oh. data showing that the suspects were currently in the SUV sh used by the shooters. In Did addition, they get their money? Huh? Did they get their fifty thousand from shooting them? No, he, he had he was holding fifty thousand in cash. That's what I just said. Oh, okay. The suspects yeah, right. then grabbed a bag full of fifty thousand in cash from the rapper who just picked it up from the bank. So I'm saying did they get it around. after the trial? Did they get to take it home with them? Just being a smart ass. Go ahead. Oh, you mean after the their Yeah, prison just see so you kill people for money. Like, oh yeah, yeah. that's nothing. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. What's the point of killing somebody if you're just going to get put in prison? It's not even that much. $50,000 yeah. is not money. Well, it's, it's a lot for Go them, ahead. I suppose, which is why they stole it. Not in the United States in any. Bad. In addition, surveillance photo videos from the motorcycle shop were added as, as, as evidence, as well as cell phone videos allegedly taken by the suspects hours after the murder. It shows them waving a handful of $100 bills. Like, just intelligence. Prime intelligence yeah. here. Why is there even a trial? They should just say, we're too stupid to live. <laughs> XXX Tentacion broke through a year before his death. His songs dealt with themes such as depression, loneliness, abandonment, and suicide. The album, Question Mark, that he released in 2018, immediately landed in first place in the American Top 200. The, n the number, his number one sad, exclamation mark, that record was a big hit. After his death, the single broke several records, including the record for most streams in one day on Spotify. The rapper certainly was not undisputed. He was a suspect of several cases of domestic violence. Fifteen charges were pending against him, including violence against a pregnant woman, taking hostage, and influencing witnesses. His ex accused him of structural violence against her in October 2016. While pregnant, she was beaten, strangled, and kicked, including to the head. So, even though... He was a terrible guy. A he got shot story, dead right. in Miami, so everyone has to be sad about it because, oh, that's twenty-year-old, twenty-year-old dead. Well, it, it is sad Street. that, yeah, it's sad that you have nothing else to to express yourself with violence, and so he died violent. He lived violent. In other music, oh, no, oh, I'm sorry. In other, no, music, you continue. No. You're you're live. You can continue. In this day in history. In 1685, Johann Sebastian Bach was born. Happy birthday, old JS. How's it going, buddy? <laughs> French mathematician Joseph Fourier was born in 1768. He uh, exerted strong influence on mathematical physics with his the analytical theory of heat, 1822, just in case you haven't heard of him. Yeah. Mexican national hero Benito Juarez was born this day in 1806 in San Pablo, Guatatayo. 
How do you spell that, that, that province of Mexico? It's pronounced O-A-X-A-C-A. -A -A. How do you pronounce that? Give me a pronunciation guy while I'm reading this. <laughs> Okay, I'll, uh, enough. Uh, the Second Battle of Somme began in World War II in 1988. The Butler Act, which outlawed the teaching of evolution in Tennessee schools, was signed into law in 1925. A hundred years later, here we are, back in banning teaching in school again. Yay! Let's not have them kids learn anything. What? A theory? A theory? No! About 70 black demonstrators were killed in Sharpsville. Oaxaca. By the way, Oaxaca. Okay. Oaxaca, Oaxaca, Oaxaca. Like like a, a H sound. I remember that. Uh, in 1960, about 70 Black African demonstrators were killed in by police in Sharpsville, Gutang Province, during the protests against South Africa's apartheid laws. So, American Civil Rights 1965, American Civil Rights Act. This Martin Luther King began the protest march from Selma to Montgomery. Alabama. 1980 U.S. President Jimmy Carter announced he was boycotting the Summer Olympics in Moscow to protest the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. Back when we just told Russia to fucking take your Olympics and shove them. In 1980, in one of America's most famous cliffhangers in American television, season three of Dallas ends with the shooting of J.R. Ewing. And the phrase, who shot J.R., entered the lexicon of American popular culture. Did you ever hear that lexicon? Have you heard of Who Shot JR? No, that doesn't sound familiar to me, but. They did a Simpsons episode of it where the baby yeah. ended up shooting Mr. Burns. You ever remember that one? Oh, yeah, I remember that episode. Yeah, that was it. Who Shot Mr. Burns or something like that. All right, that's about it um, for this day in history. I don't know what more else I can ruin. Now that's it. All right, that's been Allison here from the Netherlands, remarking on dredging up sand from the ocean floor and um, what else did we talk about? <laughs> Ukraine basketball. war. Basketball. Uh, basketball. Basketball. And you know we. And court cases. Very and exciting news. I hope to other. see you Where's my on guitar? Wednesday Maybe. so we can cover. Uh, next developments here on the Ukraine conflict and more. Have a good one. More, in more interesting stories that have probably, probably you won't hear in the mainstream media. They won't, they won't totally cover them. On before coffee. Be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and notify buttons. And follow our other channels, Toxic Alley, History of Gravy, and Scratchy Old Records.